One friend of mine once said to me, he said, whenever I am depressed, whatever time it is in the year, I find a Christmas carol and I begin to sing the carol. And the words of that carol takes me out of this discouraged mood and encourage my heart. I can see why he said that. Because Isaac Watts, he said, joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. What a joy it is to know that the Savior came to earth to die for my sins, that I can be redeemed from sin. Oh, what a joy it is. Last morning, I shared with you that these shepherds, that they were in darkness. And those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, though there are many lights that may be connected to the house and to the property, and the lights we see all around, many are still in darkness. So in Luke chapter 2 and verse number 9, they saw the angel of God. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. The angel came upon them. The Shekinah glory of God shone around about them. You could only imagine that they were out there in darkness, and all of a sudden, the Shekinah glory shone down from heaven all around them and lit up the place. That must have got their attention. They saw the light of the glory of God. May I say to you today that we too can see the light. For in John chapter 8 and verse number 12, the Bible said, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. What? Jesus said, I am the light. The Shekinah glory that shone down represent the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, I am that light. And he said, if you follow me, you will never walk in darkness because I promise I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And you shall have the light of life. Do you have this light today? If you do not have this light, I urge you, I beg you, even at this time, to stop and pay attention to why Jesus Christ came. He came that you and I might have life and have it more abundantly. In John chapter 1 and verse number 8, he was not that light, but was sent to be a witness of that light. Who was not that light? John was not that light. John was sent to be a witness of the true light, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice something else about the shepherds. The scripture said, they were so afraid. May I say that the heavenly light always produces fear in the heart of the unsaved. Imagine you are out there minding your own business at night and all of a sudden this light appear. Oh, you will immediately begin to wonder what is the meaning of this light. It brought fear in their heart. They were so afraid. A, you don't have to be afraid of Christ. You could come to him and trust him as your Lord and Savior and you would have no fear when he comes or when he calls. Fear in the heart is proof that light from heaven has been given in the heart of these shepherds, the word, the message. The heavenly light reveals guilt and sin. You see something that is done in darkness, when the light comes on, it is revealed. But notice something else about the shepherds. They heard the gospel. The gospel was proclaimed by the angel. This was a rare privilege for an angel. May I say to you that this privilege is given to man. What the angels did, the angel declared good tidings. For unto you is born a savior. In Isaiah's prophecy, he said in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse number 6, he said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The angel could not say unto us a child is born because there's no savior for a falling angel. 
So as we stop and pay attention to this Christmas, as we stop and celebrate Christmas, I would wish that we would stop and pay attention to why Christ came. He did not come so that we can have a day to celebrate. He did not come so we can have a holiday. He did not come so that family could get together and we can have a good time. He did not even come so that he can heal us. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Throughout the prophecies of him coming, we are told that he will come and the purpose in which he would come, the purpose in which he came. I want to ask you, have you stopped and not only paid attention to the purpose in which he came, have you ever stopped in your life and received the greatest gift of ever? We talk a lot about it. We sing a lot about it. Oh, how I love Jesus. Do you love Jesus Christ enough that you have given him what he died for? What he left heaven's glory and came to earth to die upon a cross for? Have you given him your life? Oh, I know if Jesus would come to your house today, you would wonder what you could give him. No doubt some folks would take an envelope and they'll push all their tithes and offerings that they never paid in an envelope if they can afford it and say, Jesus is coming. I want to pay up my debts. I would give him back my tithes and my offerings. I don't want him to come and meet me taken away from him. You know what? That's not what he died for. He died for you. He died so that you can have forgiveness of sins. He died so that you can be redeemed from the devil and from sin. He died so that you can have eternal life. And he made it possible by just offering it as a gift. This Christmas, many of you no doubt may have bought gifts to give to your loved ones. And I tell you, those people that you look at as your loved ones, when you give them or offer them your gift, you would love for them to accept your gift. I could only imagine how you would feel if you bought a gift for your wife, for your wife-to-be, for your husband or your husband-to-be, for your mom or for someone that you love and you spent all that you could for this gift and hoping that they would receive it. But when you come to them and offer the gift, they just turn their back on you and did not accept the gift. If you really love that person, I believe that that will hurt you so bad because here it is, you thought so much of the individual to go all the way out and get this gift for them and they have just turned their back on you and your gift. Would you feel good? No, you won't. But may I ask you, how many times has the Lord Jesus Christ presented you with the most expensive and durable gift that you can ever have and yet you agree that you need it but you have not received it for some they may have even made an attempt to take it but after a little while drop it on the ground jesus christ loves you he came so that you can have eternal life how many more christmases will you see we don't know i encourage you to accept that gift today before it's too late time is up one more morning will be on this our father we thank you so much for these shepherds, Lord, who heard from you. And we thank you so much for how they responded to you, dear God. We are hearing from you. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will help us to respond to you in the correct manner. Have you with us this Christmas? May we see the Christ of Christmas. May we stop and give the gift. May we stop and receive the gift of salvation and give ourselves as a gift to the Lord, the one who bought us the one who paid the price for us. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. For some, you may not have a gift to share, but would you take this devotion and share with a friend? You may be surprised. They may receive the greatest gift ever, and that's the gift of salvation. God bless you. If you do not know him, trust him before it's too late. <laughs>